Phoenix Journal number 2. And they called his name Emmanuel, I am Sananda. By Sananda and Judas Iscariot. Chapter 10. Herod and the Baptist. Five loaves and three fishes. Walking on the waves. Above all, the creation. Wreck number one Iscariot and Emmanuel Sananda. Wednesday, the 9th of August, 1989, 7 a.m. Year 2, day 358. Greetings in radiance, Dharma, for another wondrous day has been given unto you by the creation. Treasure each of the gifts for you have some unpleasant ones to come. So be it. Do not fail to witness the flowers and gifts along the path. I will surrender the alternation frequency to Judas Iscariot, that we not take too much time in idle chatter for your hands tire quickly enough, and the time span is short for having this translation finished. Enjoy the honor, however, for it is a great benevolence to allow an entity to clear of his false legacy, and set a record to correctness. Blessings are upon you ones who receive at earth physical plane, and set the dictation to permanent record. There will come a day in the twinkling of the universal eye, when man shall find these words, which will be ancient, and again, a world will be changed, for it is experienced to be so. Salu, little sparrow, I grant you strength and accuracy that you concern not about it. Thank you in graciousness. Judas here to continue through the scrolls. Do not expect the original scrolls, which are in mine hands, to be brought in the original contact other than perhaps that you and a very limited few, can view them. They would be taken and most quickly destroyed by man. However, you shall be given thy credence and credentials that thy writings be known as truth. May we do well this day, is my quest. Herod and the Baptist during the time that Emmanuel dwelled in Nazareth, news about him reached Herod. Great speculation had arisen in the land and Herod was most distressed and told the people, this surely must be John the Baptist, he has arisen from the dead, therefore he does possess great and mighty powers. Herod had seized John, bound him and put him into prison because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philippus, and subsequently had him beheaded. It had happened that John had reprimanded Herod saying, It is not good that you have taken Herodias, for you have committed adultery with her, and you have to be punished according to the law. At that moment he would like to have killed the Baptist but was afraid of the people, for they considered him to be a prophet. However, when Herod celebrated his birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced before him and it pleased him greatly. He was most lustful of her and in his foolishness, he made an unlawful oath that he would give unto her whatever she would demand of him. The young girl acted according to her mother's demands and responded, Bring me the head of John the Baptist on a platter of silver. But, the daughter of Herodias wept when she said it for she dearly loved John the Baptist and fully believed in his teachings. The king, Herod, was glad that Herodias had persuaded her daughter to demand the head of John, because this way he would not be guilty in the eyes of the people, inasmuch as he had given an oath. But Herodias' daughter did not realize that Herod and her mother had agreed, even before a dance, to demand the head of John the Baptist through her. She thought it some type of banter to be enjoyed at the celebration festival. However, Herod immediately sent soldiers and had John beheaded within the prison, and his head was carried on a silver platter and given to the young girl. The girl was overwhelmed with grief, and she kissed the forehead of the head that had been severed. She cried bitterly and said, I did not know that love could taste so bitter. Then she took John's head to her mother and placed it mockingly at her feet. The disciples of John then came and took the body from the prison and buried it. 
They then searched out Emmanuel and told him of what had happened. When Emmanuel heard this he was overcome with anxiety for his work was not yet finished, and he feared the same fate prematurely, so he went away on a light ship into a deserted area. When the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. But as Emmanuel saw the crowds gathered, from a distance, he felt great sorrow for them and entered into a boat from across the water and came unto them. He went ashore, and healed the sick and infirm. Five loaves and three fishes. In the evening the disciples came to him and said, This area is so deserted and night is falling, tell the people to go away so that they can buy food and drink in the villages. But Emmanuel said, It is not necessary that they go away, give them something to eat and drink. But they responded, we have nothing here but five loaves of bread, and three fishes for we have looked, and can find no more. Emmanuel said, Bring them unto me. He told the people to sit down, took the five loaves of bread and the fish, spoke a secret blessing, broke the loaves of bread and the fish, gave them to his disciples, and the disciples gave the food to the people. They all ate and were filled and when finished the remaining food was gathered into baskets, the baskets of morsels numbered twelve. There were about five thousand people who had eaten. After they had eaten, Emmanuel asked his disciples to get into a boat, and to take it over as far as the city ahead of him, until he could dismiss all of the people. After he dismissed all the people, he climbed to the crest of a small hillock, where he might be alone for a brief rest, that he might regain his strength and he stayed alone for a time of refreshment. Meanwhile, the ship of the disciples was in the mid-area of the sea, and was in great difficulty because the sea had swelled, and the waves were overtaking the boat. A storm had risen and the wind was contrary and they were extremely distressed and fearful. Walking on the waves. During the fourth night watch, Emmanuel came towards them, walking on the waves of the sea. When his disciples saw him walk upon the water, they were terrified and said, He is a ghost, and they were screaming in fear. Soon Emmanuel reached near unto the boat and spoke to them saying, Be comforted for it is I, do not be afraid. I have come to bring you to safety. Master, is it truly you? asked Peter. And Emmanuel answered, Verily, it is me. Peter could not understand and called to Emmanuel, Master, if it is you, please let me come to you, upon the water. Emmanuel said, Then come here unto me and do not be afraid, believe and know that the water will carry you and it shall carry you. Do not doubt in your faith and your knowledge, and the water will be firm beneath your feet. Peter stepped from the boat and was held above the water and he walked toward Emmanuel. But then strong thunder ripped through the howling storm, and he was startled and began to go down into the sea, and he screamed and called, Emmanuel, help me. Emmanuel quickly went to him, reached forth his hand and pulled him gently up above the waves saying, O oh, you of little faith, why are you startled? and why do you doubt when things appear to be difficult and formidable? The power of your knowledge gives you the ability which you have just witnessed. You trusted in my words before the thunder came, but when you were shaken and began to doubt, then the power of knowledge left you and your ability disappeared also. Never doubt in the power of the spirit which is part of the creation itself, and therefore does not know any limits of power. Behold, there was a little bird who circled the sky a great distance in the air and whistled and sang in rejoicement about life when a strong gust of wind came and made him waver. He suddenly doubted his power to fly, fell and crashed and was thusly killed. Therefore, never doubt in the power of your spirit and never doubt in your knowledge, when logic proves to you the law of the creation. Even in thy daily lives you can see the logic of the creation and know truth, 
for all about you will be done that which you perceive cannot be done. Peter and Emmanuel then stepped into the boat, and Emmanuel told the storm to stop, and it abated and the wind ceased to blow, and all was quiet as the waves became stilled. Aboard the boat, the men marveled and said, You are indeed a master of the spirit and someone who knows the laws of the creation. No one like you has ever been born, and also, no prophet has had such power. Above all, the creation. Emmanuel smiled and answered, I tell you there are greater masters of spiritual powers than me, and they are our patriarchs who came out of the great space, and the greatest among them is God and he is the spiritual ruler of the three human races. But above him, is the creation, whose laws he faithfully follows and adheres to, and he, God, is not omnipotent either, as only the creation itself, can be omnipotent. Thus, there are limits for him who allows himself to be called God, and who is above kings and emperors, as has been said. But man is ignorant and immature, because he considers God as the same as the creation, and follows the false teachings that were adulterated by distorters and charlatans. Thus, when man believes in God, he does not believe in the creation, for God is man on a far greater dimension of perfection, and it is left for man to grow in his own truth and perfection, that he can obtain such perfection. There is a great difference in God and man, however, that in his spirit he is infinitely greater than all people upon the earth. But, he is not the creation, which is infinite and without any form nor limitations. Thus, God, too, is a creation of the original creation which has no beginning and has no ending. All was very quiet upon the sea as they came across the water and went ashore, in the land of Genasaret. When the people in this place became aware of him, they sent word all over the land and brought all to him who were sick and infirm. They asked that they might even touch the hem of his clothing that they might be healed, and thus, it took place, those that so much as touched the hem of his robe became whole. Thank you, Dharma. Let us take a brief leave of the word for respite. Salu. I will await your signal to continue. Editor's Note To all my listeners and viewers, please check the description section of this video for the source, reference links and additional comments. From there, you will also have access to the Phoenix journals, which were banned by the U.S. government, along with the initial set of foundational Phoenix journals recommended by Commander Hatton to read, reread, and study first. The journals serve to unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings, and misconceptions foisted upon the masses by those who seek to control the thoughts perceptions, and actions of others from generation to generation, especially those concerning the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. For uninformed readers, the new name and title of Sananda represents an earned level of utmost respect and achievement for the accomplished and highly revered master teacher, meaning one with God. In fact, even your mistranslated and tampered with Bibles mention that he would have a new name upon his return. The Phoenix journals are the word of truth bestowed upon mankind by the higher realms of light, during this most critical time in Earth's evolution, unto a higher dimension. Please like, share and subscribe to help support this channel, and as always have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.